Lesson 12.2 is arithmetic sequences. I would pause the video and write down these notes. An arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the difference between successive terms is always the same number. So you're adding the same thing every single time. We call that value that you add every single time the common difference, which we use the letter D to represent. And you can find the common difference by taking any two consecutive terms and subtracting them the further term minus the smaller term. So a sub 2 minus a sub 1, a sub 3 minus a sub 2, any a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. The recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence, you always have to make sure you define your first term, and then your current term is your previous term plus your common difference, or minus your common difference if it's subtraction. Because there's this constant increase, arithmetic sequences are actually the same thing as linear functions that just have domains of the positive integers, so they can be represented with a linear function. Um, and the common difference would be the same thing as the slope. It's your constant rate of change. So if you don't have two consecutive terms, but you have any two terms, you can actually basically use slope formula to find your common difference. So subtract the two terms divided by the two term numbers subtracted. Looking at these four sequences, we want to determine whether or not they are arithmetic, and if they are, to write their recursive formula. So keeping in mind that arithmetic sequences add the same value every single time, we have two sequences that just give us a list of the first few terms, and then two sequences that give us the nth term or the explicit formula. Go ahead and pause the video and decide whether or not each one is arithmetic, and for the ones that are arithmetic, write out their recursive formulas. Because the first two were already written out with the first few terms, I just looked to see if I was adding the same thing every single time. For the first one, you add 2 to get to 6, you add 2 to get to 8, you add 2 to get to 10. So if that pattern continues, you're adding the exact same value every single time. So therefore, this would be arithmetic with a common difference of plus 2. So the recursive formula, first term, a sub 1 equals 4. And then a sub n, the pre current term is equal to a sub n minus 1, the previous term. What are we doing to it every single time? We're adding 2. For the next one, to go from 1 to negative 2, you'd subtract 3. To go from negative 2 to 4, you'd add 6, and then subtract 12 to get to negative 8. Since we're not adding the same thing every single time, this is not arithmetic. The next two are written in explicit formula, so I just found the first few terms. So for this first one, 3n plus 5, um, I just plugged in 1 through 4, and I got 8, 11, 14, 17, which means we were adding 3 every single time. So this is arithmetic with a common difference of plus 3. So a sub 1 equals 8, a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 3. And then the last one, you get 6, 18, 54. So you would add 12 to the first second term. You'd add 36 to get to the third term. So this is not arithmetic because you're not adding the same thing every single time. Whenever you have an explicit formula that looks like the equation of a line, as we talked about on the first slide, arithmetic formulas are the same thing as or arithmetic sequences are the same thing as linear functions. Um, so whenever you see something like this, it's going to be arithmetic. So if we want to find the nth term or the general term or the explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence that has a first term of a and a common difference for, of d, we can use the recursive formula to help us build out what the explicit formula would look like. So I expanded out the first four terms of this sequence. So a sub 1 is just a. So then using the recursive formula, a sub 2 would be a sub 1 plus your common difference of d, so that would be a plus d. a sub 3 would be a sub 2 plus d, so a plus d plus d, so therefore a plus 2d. And then a sub 4 would be a sub 3 plus d, so a sub 2d plus d, which would be a sub 3d. So use this to expand out a sub 5 and a sub 6, see if you can predict a sub 50, and see if you can write a general formula for arithmetic sequences. So for a sub 5, it'd be a sub 4 plus d, or a plus 3d plus d, so a plus 4d. And then for a sub 6, you would end up with a plus 5d. So what I notice is every single time, we're adding d one less time than whatever the term number is. Even a sub 1 would be a plus 1 minus 1d. a sub 2 would be a plus 2 minus 1d, all the way down. So then for a sub 50, we're going to add that common difference. We're going to start with the initial term, and then we're going to add that common difference 49 times, so you end up with a plus 49d. So the explicit formula for arithmetic sequences is a sub n, the current term, is equal to your first term, a sub 1, 
plus n minus 1 times the common difference, as long as you start at term 1. Every once in a while, you'll see this rewritten, and they'll write it, like, they'll distribute everything out and write it in, like, slope-intercept type form, but they're equivalent. So here we have two examples. We have the sequence 2, 6, 10, so on and so forth, and we want to find the 13th term. And then for the second one, they give us the 8th term, a sub 8 is equal to 75, and the 20th term, a sub 20 equals 39, and we want to find the recursive formula and the nth term for this sequence. So go ahead and pause the video and try these two. The first one is pretty straightforward. They give us the first three terms of the sequence, so we know that the first term is 2, and we know that the common difference is 4. So I wrote the nth term out, so a sub n is equal to the first term, what you're doing every single time, times n minus 1, so 2 plus 4 times n minus 1. And then if I want the 13th term, that means I want n to be 13, so just plug in 13 to be n, and you get 50. So the nice thing about the explicit formula is for recursive, you have to do the pattern out until you get to whatever term you want. For the explicit formula, or the nth term, you can just plug in n and evaluate, just like a function for a linear equation as well. For the next one, you kind of want to think of this as a linear function. Um, so they give us two terms, um, and we know that it's a constant increase. So like we said before, we can use basically slope formula, where your term is your y value and your term number is your x value. So change in term over change in term number, so 39 minus 75 over 20 minus 8, you end up with your slope, which is our common difference, to be negative 3. And then for recursive and explicit, we need the first term. So I just used one of our values and plugged them in and solved for the first term. So I plugged in 75 for a sub n and plugged in 8 for n into like our general formula and got that a sub 1, our first term, is 96. So then the recursive formula, a sub 1 is equal to 96, a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1 minus 3. What do you start with? What are you doing every single time? And then your explicit formula, or your nth term, a sub n is equal to your first term. What are you starting with? What are you doing every single time? So 96 minus 3 times n minus 1. I usually leave my answer like this, but a lot of times you will see it rewritten, simplified, um, into a sub n equals negative 3n plus 99. It doesn't matter. They're equivalent to each other. For the sum of a terms of an arithmetic series, we talked about summation and, er and series in 12.1. It's the sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence that has first term of a sub 1 and a common difference of d. It actually ends up working out to be the area of a trapezoid. So it's n over 2, where n is how many terms you're summing up, times the sum of your first term and your last term. If you don't know your last term, you can use your explicit formula to find it, or if you just plug in the explicit formula into, for in a sub n, so a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1, it ends up being twice a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. So you can either memorize both of these or just always use this to find your nth term and then plug it in. So first thing, we have the sum of the first n terms of the sequence 3n plus 5. So we want to write this out as the summation. So go ahead and pause the video and try to use the formula here to write up the sum of the first n terms in terms of n. So for this sequence, the first term is 8. I just plugged in 1 and got 8. In, we're summing up the first n term, so n is just going to be n, and then our nth term is just going to be our nth term, 3n plus 5. So we're keeping this one general instead of summing up a specific number of terms. So n is just n. The first term is 8, and the nth term is 3n plus 5. You could leave it this way. You could leave it here, simplified. The 5 plus 8 is 13, or you can distribute it a little bit more. But basically, the sum of the first n terms would be 3n squared plus 13n all over 2. So for this next one, they actually give us a series written out. They don't tell us how many terms it is, but they do give us the nth term or the a sub n term. So go ahead and pause the video and try and sum up using your arithmetic series formula, this arithmetic series. So for this one, we know our first term is 60. We know our a sub n is 120. We just don't know what n is. So I used our explicit formula to find n, how many terms we're actually summing up. So I know I was adding 4 every single time. So I set up my nth term with 120 being a sub n. So 120 is equal to 60 plus 4 times n minus 1 because I'm solving for the term number, 
when I know the term. And then I simplified this and I found n to be 16. So we're summing up the first 16 terms of this sequence. So s sub 16, the sum of the first 16 terms is n, which is 16 over 2, times the first term plus the last term, 60 plus 120. You end up with 1,440. A ceramic tile floor is designed in the shape of a trapezoid, 20 feet wide at the base and 10 feet wide at the top. The tiles are 12 inches by 12 inches, and they're placed so that each successive row contains one less tile than the preceding row. So how many tiles will this entire floor require? Go ahead and pause the video and try this. So since each tile is 12 inches by 12 inches, I knew that basically the bottom row is going to have 20 tiles because each one's a foot, so there's going to be 20 tiles. So a sub 1 is 20, and then the top row is going to have 10, so a sub n is 10. Your common difference, 1 less, so it's going to be minus 1, but we don't know n. We don't know how many rows there are. So again, just like the previous one, I set up my nth term to find that. We know our term, we just need to find our term number. So I plugged in 10 for a sub n, plugged in 20 for a sub 1, minus 1 for your common difference. You end up with there to be 11 rows. So then we want to find the, first, the sum of the first 11 terms, basically. 11 over 2 times 20 plus 10, you end up with 165. So this has been arithmetic sequences and series.